How else could it continue to be visible? If you watch carefully, you can see that the anomaly is actually pulsating. It's getting brighter and dimmer on a very slow cycle. Suddenly, the Inco cuts the live feed and takes us to the animated tracker again. Back to Mission Control Houston. What is the man on the phone doing? Then the Inco returns us to the payload bay camera for a last look at the object before he cuts us off for good. This is the sunset portion of the clip. At 10 times normal speed, the pulsating characteristic really stands out. And after the sun has gone down, just exactly what is illuminating it out there in the dark? This is the same accelerated clip zoomed in 200%. This close-up reveals that the object is rather egg-shaped. It may even be the same object seen 90 minutes later in the flyby incident. Please bear in mind that the sun was behind the camera, over the shoulder if you will. This shows us that the object was actually deeper into the night than Discovery herself precluding this thing being ice or debris illuminated by the sun. After a few minutes observing this object, the Inco at Houston cut the public feed. Why was the feed cut with such an interesting object in view? I think we can guess. It's certain that there are no celestial objects in the sky which could travel with Discovery and Issy. There were also no man-made satellites or spacecraft on the same orbit as the shuttle station complex, let alone self-luminous man-made craft. So we are left with an anomaly. The orb was the first anomalous incident from STS-96. It is also possibly connected with the next event, the flyby, which took place just one orbit later in close proximity to this same location on the globe. This event occurred in full darkness over the Pacific Ocean, east of New Zealand on 3rd June 1999. The astronauts had completed their assigned tasks aboard the station. The hatches between shuttle and the station were closed and sealed. Some 45 minutes later, the shuttle crew executed a series of maneuvers designed to boost the orbit of the complex. Whilst this was going on, something bizarre and unexpected took place. A surprising object buzzed past the shuttle station complex. It was very bright, very close, and exhibited a pulsating characteristic. The camera was set for infinity and the object displayed a sharply focused, rounded outline. This tells us that it was quite a bit further away than just a few feet from the camera lens, yet its brightness in the absence of sunlight strongly suggests self-illumination. The orb was seen over the same area of the Central Pacific Ocean in the last event. This scene is from Discovery's low-light payload bay camera during the orbital reboost maneuver. 
technicians at Mission Control were monitoring how the rocket firings were affecting the solar panels. Quite suddenly and unexpectedly, a bright anomaly showed up. It was the first I ever found in NASA footage. It shocked me to the bone and inspired all the work I've completed since. This is the anomaly. And this is ice. Compare them, if you will. Here we have the anomaly repeated three times for you. Notice the sharply defined egg shape and the pulsating characteristic. Compare this object carefully with the ice chip you'll see later. At 10% normal speed, the shape and behavior of the anomaly become much more evident. You can see just how bright this thing is, too. NASA's snowy mask and the red-green-blue color cycling are also well in evidence here. With colors reversed, the way this thing pulsates becomes even harder to miss. When enlarged 200%, the egg shape of this object becomes obvious. Two hundred percent enlargement combined with reversed coloration. There are those who will say that the anomalous object is just another out of focus ice particle or fragment of debris. This is what a real ice chip looks like. Notice how dull it is, even in the floodlight mounted on the camera. Taking into account the facts of this case, I must conclude that a self-propelled, self-luminous object flew in close proximity to the shuttle station complex on 3rd June 1999. This object is obviously not associated with any publicly known Earth-based space program, so it must be something else. What? Your guess is as good as mine. I have called this entire seven-minute live downlink the Florida Sequence. In my personal opinion, it is possibly the most important NASA UFO footage I have ever captured myself. By 4th June 1999, the STS-96 resupply mission to ISI was in its last days. The wee hours of 4th June were a quiet time aboard Discovery and at Mission Control as well. Shuttle Discovery had undocked from the International Space Station the day before. The crew were enjoying some much-deserved rest and were in their sleep period during this incident. The ship was making a nighttime pass over the Gulf of Mexico, heading northeast above South Florida and out over the Atlantic Ocean. As Discovery sailed past Florida, her path took her nearly parallel to the east coast of the United States. Potent thunderstorms were in evidence far below, 
And as the shuttle flew over, the low-light night camera in the payload bay also caught sight of 21 anomalous objects amongst those storms.